Well, <laughs> we're having church today, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, good morning. It's wonderful to be with you. I'm here to make sure I'm turned on here. Yep, I am. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about oneness. I could sort of thought, oh, I talk about this or that, and it kept coming to me. So I'm learning to uh, go in the direction the river is going rather than try to push in a different direction. Uh, so for people coming into metaphysics or people who are deepening in their metaphysical practice, I think it can be a difficult thing to change from finding uh, the good that we seek, uh, health outside of ourselves, abundance outside of ourselves, to the experience of health originates in here, abundance originates in here. Uh, to change from looking for any good thing out in the world to saying, you know, it really starts inside of me. You know, we would say that the things we seek are to be found in our relationship with God. This is a very powerful spiritual truth, that this is revealed through dedicated spiritual practice. And of course, in the science of mind, Ernest Holmes was so incredibly practical when he formulated this teaching, because there are lots of practices that we do that are all about bringing us to a place of greater awareness of our oneness with God, with spirit, with the infinite. You know, we pray, we meditate, we study, we serve, we tithe, we forgive, we practice gratitude, we journal, we work with our practitioner. All of these things are to bring us back again and again and again to you and I. We are one with God. So this, uh, and I realize that all of this is, you know, it sounds like, oh, well, that should be pretty easy. Um, not so much. You know, Jesus addresses this when he says, the way is straight and narrow, but few be there that enter. Right? Because, you know, it's... it's uh, uh, that idea that when we start to practice very, very seriously, um, sometimes it gets more difficult before it actually gets easier. It's like, you know, look, I personally believe that all wisdom is contained in the Wizard of Oz. So <laughs> if you will think back to when uh, the characters are going into the witch's haunted forest, and the scarecrow says, I don't know, but I think it gets darker before it gets lighter, and I think, God, that's true in life so often, that things seem to get a little worse before they get a lot better. So let's begin by letting go of the age-old notion that God rewards goodness and punishes us for other things, right, for, for, for doing something bad. God does not reward and punish. God does not have favorites. I know, I can, I, I can hear the silent groans from those who have carried a burden of guilt for years, I'm here to tell you this morning, there are no martyrs in metaphysics. You know, you don't necessarily get closer to God because you suffer. Although I know many of us come from a background where people believe, and, and this is so, for, for hundreds and even thousands of years, the people believed that their suffering made them closer to God. Now, I believe that suffering brings you closer to suffering, is what suffering does. There are lots of people who suffer, and they don't get any closer to God. Right? So, so that, is, that is not necessarily true. Our good is dependent only on our relationship to God. This is the bottom line in the science of mind. You know, to just think about God is not enough. There has to be an active spiritual practice, an active remembering, an active uh, affirmation. You know, I've, I've read again and again that every thought you think is a prayer. Mm. And so every time I remind myself of that, I think, oh, is that really what I want to be praying? Is that really what I want to be manifesting? Is that really what I want to be creating? Is that really what I want to be calling forth into my life from the unformed substance of the universe? If there's infinite possibilities and every thought I think is a prayer, oh, maybe I better not think that one. Maybe I better not speak that out loud. See, the, that, that relationship that we have with the power and presence and principle of God is a relationship of oneness. Whether you've been good or bad, naughty or nice, Santa Claus. Uh, in John, it says, uh, it talks about how Jesus gives us this very powerful teaching where he says, I and my Father are one. Another way we could say that is, I and the Father, Mother, God are one. You know, there's no worthy in this picture, right? Uh, that equation where I and the Father, you don't hear, I and the Father, Mother, God are one if I'm worthy. That's not, it's just that we are one with this principle, power, and presence. You are worthy of all good. You are worthy of health. You are worthy of love right now. Right now. You don't need to be any different than who you are right now to be worthy. 
Worthy is uh, something that we have made up. Everybody is worthy because everyone is an expression, an extension of God mind. Right? So uh, we, we make our life from the inside out. This is what we teach in the science of mind. So if you carry any unworthy, oh, I'm not worthy for this good, I'm not, let go of that right now. It is not serving you. God loves you right now as you are. So if we lack anything, let's not blame God, okay? Like God, God is like the sun. The sun is always shining, right, somewhere. Now, we may have stepped into the shadow, which, in which case we could really believe the sun is not shining, Oh, but think about this. If you step into the shadow and you start to, you know, oh, the sun isn't shining on me. But the sun is over there on the other side of the building, shining really, really brightly, making the flowers grow and the grass green and doing all that great stuff the sun does. But you're saying, oh, the sun doesn't shine on me. Poor me, the sun doesn't shine on me. Now, I don't know about you, but I have certainly stepped into the shadow a number of times. And sometimes, you know, it's funny, because when you're in the shadows, it's convincing that the shadow is real. Right? When we forget that all if we do have to do is take a couple of steps and come into the sunlight. Right? So God doesn't have any stepchildren. God doesn't have any favorites. You know, so our job is to be in right alignment, to be in right relationship with this infinite loving spirit. You know, but to claim your good, and the good I'm talking about is love and supply and health, you know, without understanding that your good is your good because of this divine relationship. You know, we, you have, we have to understand, our good is already ordained by God. You know, if you think your good is dependent on your doing, then that would just be feeding your ego, I believe. God is spirit. I am spirit. You are spirit. The perfection of God is the perfection of our being. You know, it's not out there. It's in here. Hmm? So the world always wants to tempt us to a belief in the absence of something. You know, if you look at the Sunday paper for even a minute, there are all these things that it's giving you a message that you lack. You know, you need this product, and you need to do this, and you need to be this way. Um, we want to shut out those appearances, I believe. Um, most people have a greater capacity to do things than they are currently doing. I believe that's so. We all have the capacity to express and experience more. Our mind, our soul, our spirit, can be developed, and if we are not developing, I think then we are wasting God's gift. You know, uh, did you hear as a child this expression, waste not, want not? Yep, I heard it again and again. So, you know, one of the things I think about is I love that movie uh, from years ago, Groundhog's Day with Tom Hanks. You know, remember, if you remember that movie, the guy lives the same day over and over and over again. And it's such a powerful image to me. And I think, wow, I wonder, do I do that? Do we do that? Um, you know, we don't want to neglect the opportunity to, to develop more, to rise in consciousness, to express more of the God-given spirit and life force that we are. The truth is, we cannot be one with God and lack anything. So if we are lacking, that means in that area, we do not believe that we are connected with the source. So if the source of health is God within me, and I know that I am one with God, and I really believe that, I will have a greater experience of health. If I know the source of all abundance is God within me, my job is not my source, my investments are not my source, my this, my that, those things are not my source. Those are avenues, those are reflections of what's happening because I'm connected with the source of all abundance that's within me, and on and on and on. Um, so one day, Big Louie calls his minister. Yeah, Big Louie. Louie was a tough guy, an unscrupulous guy. Uh, he was from a big uh, crime family, if you know what I mean. And he says to the minister, my brother Tony died, and I want you to tell the people at the funeral, you tell them Tony was a saint, and I will make a very large gift to your building fund. And if I don't hear you say these words, Tony was a saint, well, I would hate to think of what would happen to a nice guy like you. Right. So the minister is really sweating about this, you know, and so comes the day of the service, and he's doing the service, and he gets to the eulogy, and he sees big Louie in the front row. And Louie's just sitting there kind of going. 
So the minister continues, everybody knows that the departed Tony was a cheat. And he sees Louis's face and he says, he cheated on his wife. He cheated on his taxes. He cheated at the races and cards. But compared to his brother Louis, Tony was a saint. Yes. Uh. So uh, Paramahansa Yogananda uh, said that to define yourself in terms of limitations is a desecration of the image of God you are. In other words, if you think your limitations are really you, if you think those limitations define you, you are limiting this infinite loving spirit of God that you truly are. So this week, I am encouraging all of us to choose to remember our oneness with God. Now, this is not as difficult as you might imagine. It's just, it's just like a little, just a little friendly remembering. See, because this also means that you are one with all people. That in the science of mind, in the mystery of God, we are all connected on the unseen side of life. You know, there, and, and so this necess it necessarily follows that it's no coincidence who shows up in our life on a daily basis. Hmm? It's like the universe is saying, hey, can you remember your oneness with this person? How about this person? How about in this situation? This is good. See, I was just with my family back east for a few days. It was an intensive, intensive workshop on trying to remember my oneness with God. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it worked, and sometimes not so much. But, but sometimes it did work. And I was really grateful for those times when it did work. See, because I think we're always being invited to step up. I think we're always being invited to be big. I think we're always, always being invited to recognize our oneness with God. So the more we do this, the more we'll see real transformation in our life. You know, we'll see real healing in our life. The more we do this, we'll see uh, more of all of God's good showing up in, in our life. So there was a guy who was in line um, at a grocery store. And, uh, and there was a woman in front of him with just one item. And it was curious to him that she didn't go through the quick checkout line. You know? Now, she had with her uh, a small baby. And uh, when she gets to the register, she starts visiting with the cashier. And they're talking about the baby and how cute the baby is and how wonderful the baby is and how adorable the baby is. And this guy just wants to check through and get out of the store, right? So he's starting to get annoyed. You know how we get, you know how we get, and we think, you know, well, I will express my annoyance in subtle ways that they will eventually get. So you kind of like do a little huffing and puffing. <sighs> you know, and you know, maybe you sort of adjust your items on the belt a little bit and stuff like that. And you, you know, tap your foot and <sighs> cross and uncross. And you know, we're giving all those passive aggressive cues. Yes. And so, um, anyway, what happens is they're, they're talking about the baby, the guy's annoyed, and the woman who is in line hands the baby over to the cashier. And, um, and the guy's thinking, I, I should say something, I should really say something, but he doesn't because he has just been on a meditation retreat. <laughs> and this is clearly, clearly the perfect place to practice, so he decides, okay, I will watch my breath. That's it. That's it. I've just spent a week being taught how to watch my breath. And so here he is in line at the grocery store going, in, out. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. And after a minute, he returns um, to sort of a peaceful place, and he notices this change has taken place within him, that he actually feels better, just breathing in and breathing out. And the woman uh, gets her baby back from the cashier, and, and she leaves the store with her, with her one item and the baby. And so as he gets up to the cashier, he doesn't even realize he's saying it, but he says to the woman, that was a really cute baby. And the woman says, oh, do you think so? Wow, thank you so much. She says, that was my baby. She says, you see, my husband died in the Air Force a few months ago. And my mother takes care of him so I can work here every day. So she comes in every afternoon because the day is so long for me to not see the baby. 
So you see, we're all connected with God and with each other. And sometimes, sometimes, before we say that snarky thing, or before we think something that we know is below our level of consciousness, the best thing we could do is just breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Remember, I'm one with God. I am one with God. Now, God is certainly not holding back the love, right? Because God, there's no withhold in divine consciousness. It's already within all of us. So you want more love in your life? Be patient, you know? Take a breath. Take another breath, you know? It will come forward, but where it comes from is within you. So do this with me now as we prepare to do our prayer. I breathe in the love of God. Just think that silently while you're breathing in. I'm breathing in the love of God. Exhaling, I give this love out to my world. I'm breathing in the love of God, and exhaling, I give my love out to the world. One more time. I'm breathing in the love of God, and exhaling, I return my love out to the world. So keeping our attention inward, we remember that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God's spirit, God's love is present here. And the truth at the deepest level of our being is that we are one with God. We are one with the source of all good. And we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us, that we live our life in an awareness of this oneness, knowing that it all starts deep within us, that our life gets better from the inside out. And so I claim that whatever does not serve us this day, we surrender that, whether it's a thought or a habit pattern, a way of being in the world, something we've believed about ourselves or someone else. If it doesn't serve us, we willingly surrender it today. And in its place, I know more of God's good is revealed for each and every one of us. Because again, the source of health and the source of love and the source of abundance and creativity and joy, that source is within each and every one of us. And we give it way to express more fully in every area of our life. So we include our parents and children, our family members and friends in our prayer today knowing that right where they are, God is. And as we think about them, we let the love that is within us move out into the world, surrounding them and filling them. We let our prayer be a blessing in this world that we live in, so that all that looks discordant to us, everything that makes us fearful or even feel separate, we say God is right there, even in the midst of that. We bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams and all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together, that there is raising up for each and every one of us. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.